anxiety is it is an emotion because our, our brain is, is always looking to protect us. Right. When that happens for you, focusing on what's happening in the moment. Um, again, you're kind of back in control. Back Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am naturopath and co-founder of the Kidney Disease Solution and Kygenesis, Fiona. And I'm joined again today by the beautiful Nicole Williams from the Kidney Nutritional Institute. Right, so I'm really excited to have you again. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for having me again. Well, so Nicole's been generous enough with her time to come on and, and for us to go through what anxiety looks like. Uh, anxiety is it is an emotion and it's usually characterized by feelings of fear, dread. And so that's coming from the thought processes around um, what's either happening to you or what could be happening in the future. What also happens though is that we do have a physiological response. So our hearts could start beating really rapidly. We may start sweating. Um, some people can experience like an upset stomach. So you'll notice um, for certain individuals, they may notice those body sensations first because they present, but it's really a pattern of that thought of dread, um, maybe ruminating thoughts, tension, those sorts of things of what, what can happen in the future if you notice that about yourself as you're thinking about that. So, so what, what are some strategies and what are some ways that you give your um, clients to combat this and te like you were going to tease some of that stuff out? So take us through that of what that would, if someone was coming to see you, how do you work with people through this and how do you support them? Yeah. Um, so first... I want to first identify um, how we can begin to just slowly shift the mindset. So do some of the mind work. Um, mm -hmm. And that comes along with understanding the anxiety and fear a little bit more for yourself, um, anticipating and sort of forecasting the worst case scenario. It's interesting because our, our brain is, is always looking to protect us, right? And so it's it's kind of wired for survival. So, so the first step is understanding when that happens for you. Um, in the example of the pre-testing period, using that as a starting point, right? When do you notice that your anxiety peaks? At what point along that chain, that chain of events do you notice that happens? And taking some time to do some inventory, because once you identify um, either the event, the trigger, it could be the time of day. Nighttime seems to be a time when anxiety can peak for many individuals. We then can um, talk about strategies for helping you. So that's the first step that I kind of try to tease out for clients and support them in understanding how, why that's important and how we can um, begin to um, identify ways to help them feel better in those moments. Mm -hmm. Um, when it also comes to noticing your thoughts, um, thinking about how often you think about your illness also would be really important. Yeah. Okay. I know that, um, having a chronic condition, it's a huge part of your life and there's so many changes that you have to make, but taking time, um, or really taking inventory on what you're thinking about is equally as important. Um, remembering that you are a whole person and thinking about ways in which your body is supporting you. How is it working in your favor? Um, how hard is it? Um, um, what are the other parts of you as a person that are, that are functioning well and that are really doing well? Um, mm -hmm. is, is very critical and important. Um, then allowing space or allowing for these thoughts and feelings to come and go. Um, the next thing I have on here is meditation. Now Perfect. I've heard, <laughs> I, I love it too, but I have <laughs> heard, um, from quite a few clients med who don't meditate, you know, that's not my thing. I can't do that. Um, first of all, meditation can be very simple. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes long, right? Um, taking, practicing some simple breathing exercises, even for a few minutes to just mm. calm um, 
the amygdala is the part of our brain that's sort of freaking out when we're experiencing any fear or anxiety. So you're, you're calming that part of your brain so that you can support yourself better. So meditation looks like taking some um, moments of breathing. It also, what I also like to offer clients is a way for them to be, to get more mindful. Um, so in the space of meditation, what that might look like is focusing on what's happening in the moment. Mm -hmm. The other part of this that I actually use and have a lot of experience in is the use of aromatherapy. Um, I've studied that for um, quite a few years and just uh, the scent alone has a way and there's different types of scents that can offer a pause so that you can really um, center yourself and um, redirect those thoughts that you're having and, it's, and experiencing. The last part of that is kind of acting or taking action to doing something about it and action um, looks like a few things. And I'll just share the few that I have found beneficial and, and I've um, shared a lot with others. The first is um, getting the, those ruminating thoughts or feelings from head to paper. And so um, that might look like a traditional journal, journaling practice you have. Um, don't forget, you can use your phone. You don't have to find a pad of paper and a pen if you're kind of on the go or whatever. I use the notes section in my phone all the time. <laughs> okay. um, and um, there's, a, there's also another kind of um, cool practice. And I refer to it as a, as a brain dump. And that is literally all of these kind of thoughts kind of circulating in my mind. I just put them on paper. It's mm -hmm. not for anyone else to read. It's not meant to be coherent. It's just what is coming immediately to the forefront for me. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> you are in a sense giving your, um, your brain a, a little bit of space to breathe. It's an action that you're taking on, um, on those thoughts that you're having. And it's a great way to feel that, um, again, you're kind of back in control. So thanks again for your time, Nicole. Again, if you need to reach Nicole, Kidney Nutritional Institute, if you want to know more about what we do, head to www.kidneycoach.com. Also, if you want to see our Facebook community, they're an amazing uh, community. There isn't a lot of scary stories on there. We've, they're actually filled with hope. And then we put up research papers and things like that. So that's Facebook forward slash Kidney Coach. And if you um, want to be reminded every time we put up a new video, we're putting up great content all the time, hit the subscribe and like button and you'll get a notification whenever a new video goes up. Again, thank you, Nicole. Thank you for being part of our community. We hope you found this useful. If there's anything that you'd like Nicole to come back and talk about, leave a comment below and we will definitely have a look at that. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.